seems that there is 104 people here. So we're gonna, okay, yeah, we're, we're okay. So um, I'm gonna start recording too. Andrea's already started, so. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, I think we're just gonna start and if our, uh, if one of our speakers comes, he comes. If not, we'll see. But yeah, um, so welcome to Hack the Helix. Uh, it's the opening ceremony, so yeah, welcome. It's the first day. So the submission period for this competition just opened like a few like minutes ago. So if you already have your product done, which is kind of weird, then you can submit it, but yeah. Um, so organizing team, Andrew, do you want to talk about this? And is Andrew, Andrew. Okay, so yeah, yeah I'm Yash. I'm Yash, I'm the co-director. Um, so I like in terms of my experience and stuff, like I've worked with programming most of my life. I've um, <clears throat> done a lot of data analysis work, uh, lots of work in like machine learning, deep learning and you know, stuff like that. So I'm like decently experienced and I also have competed in a good amount of hackathons. So um, that also means like any questions you have about like programming or like structuring a product or anything like that, I can help. I'm Andrew. Um... I am also another co-director and I specialize in marketing and outreach. So a lot of you might have found out about our hackathon through like Instagram or Discord server. So that was me. And also we have William King who isn't here right now, but he's our VP and he is like specializing in also outreach, marketing, advertising. So those of you who came from Reddit or other places, probably it was through Will. Yeah. And then, of course, thank you to our amazing sponsors who donated over, I think, around $2,000 total. Um, yeah. uh, so our, our presenting sponsor <laughs> is SparkTeen, which is another student-led organization based in Portland, Oregon. And they will, they will be doing an entrepreneurship talk soon. So if any of you are interested in starting a company in the future or just entrepreneurship in general, FBLA, DECA, HOSA, it would be a good experience for you. And that's actually led by the leader of Spark Team, so that would be a, a special experience. Our next sponsor is our uh, is, it, is our gold level sponsor, Hamilton Education, which is a an amazing college counseling and test prep company based in San Diego, and they have a lot of successes. I believe they've had I think forty ACT SAT perfect scores. In fact, um, by doing prep through them, I got an, I got a perfect score on the ACT and a fifteen ninety on the SAT as a sophomore. So they have a really good program, really great tutors, and they even have online learning programs. So you can actually keep learning online and they've adjusted their curriculum to fit the new AP exam format. So I definitely recommend it, not just because they sponsored us, but uh, also because we've a lot of us have actually taken class with them and it it's really good. Our other uh, gold sponsor, our other, sorry, silver sponsors are Singular Genomics, Kumquat Biosciences and Latitude Pharmaceuticals. They're all local biotech, bioinformatics uh, companies that do a lot of like medicine, healthcare related uh, activities. We also are powered by Def Post for submissions. Yeah. And the, so next, I'll talk more about yeah. the, and the next people we want to thank are all our amazing ambassadors. And after the hackathon, we will be starting to raffle out the awards and prizes for the ambassadors. So hang tight. So uh, shout out to Skylar Basco, Eric Song, David Nashe, Jed Kui, Jed Kui, uh, Kui, uh, Peter Tao, Alice Ye, Sarah Gao, Lemia Ladam, and more. And these are like our top ambassadors. I believe Skylar actually got I think 16 or 17 people to sign up. I think by now 20. So they all did a great job of helping spread the word about our hackathon, especially to um, new people who haven't actually done a hackathon before. Thank you. Um, okay. Stream is like actually breaking my. Okay, so what is a hackathon? Um, like in the most simple terms, so like in the most simple terms, a hackathon is like this amount of time that you have to create software. So like it's so it's super constrained. So you might ask like, what can you do in like this amount of time, right? Like you can't build anything super significant because it obviously takes time, right, to plan and you know work it out. But like the entire point is to get ideas out there. So 
and then you're also um it also like it's a, also like a team builder at like many big um companies so like google does their own hackathon like facebook does their intercompany hackathon so there's just like lots of um implications like towards a hackathon so um this also allows for like faster product management and faster like product delivery and like product um development in certain companies because essentially they're rushed in like this period of time but they have a basis where they can build off of so what a hackathon is is you essentially have three days to program any like to program a software so when i say software i mean like it could be an app it could be um something physical like a, in arduino or a raspberry pi it can be um, a website it can be a dashboard it can be any like anything software related it can be but it has to relate to the theme in an impactful manner and like towards the judging criteria which i'll talk more about but yeah um and then so what to expect um so obviously uh every person is required a team of two to four so if you don't have your teams right now that's fine like we've we'll get you paired up and we'll ensure that you can submit it um and so by that we'll probably have like some project gallery in which like people that already have projects or like ideas can like pitch them and you know like attract new members so that everyone can you know participate um you make cool things that like can honestly serve as a basis of like um you know that of like so like not only do you like learn stuff through making stuff but like you also make the, these things that like the software that can like uh, act as a basis of um like future projects and like if you want to continue working on it it's all yours to work on and like you can you know expand on it it's just like an idea starter and like some like a starting place um and then you receive prize money if you if you get the top three so for prizes so the first place uh, is a 400 dollars grand prize um second place is a 200 dollars prize uh uh, third place is a hundred dollars and then we have our four special awards which you can check out on the website but it's best design most innovative uh, best presentation and most socially impactful and all four of those get 25 dollars uh you know awards Andrew. so as far as our schedule goes we have a lot of cool activities lined up for y'all so of course, right now we have like these, these times are on Pacific uh, Los Angeles time, by the way. So keep that in mind. So at 10 a.m. we have our kickoff, which is going on right now. And then at 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. we'll start having our uh, beginner workshops for those of you who haven't coded before. And if you're new to coding, kudos to you for taking the dive and trying out this hackathon because that's really good on you for being willing to take like this, this step. So we'll be guiding you step by step through making a website and also making a personal dashboard. So with this dashboard, you can basically import data from another source automatically and have it show up on your dashboard. So you can use this for gathering the news, weather, perhaps even coronavirus, depending on where you want to go with this project. At 7 p.m., uh, Yash will be doing his seminar on introduction to, introduction to convolutional neural networks, which is part of uh, deep learning. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., Calix, a Helix member, will be doing a workshop on professional branding and how to get internships. At noon, Kyler Wang, uh, the director of Spark Teen, which is our presenting sponsor, will be doing a Q&A on entrepreneurship and how you can how to like start a company. At 3 p.m., will be Eleanor Zhang will be who's a ISEF, ISEF Grand Award sweepstakes runner up. will be doing a seminar on how she a novel approach to kill bacteria and stop bacterial infections using endo license and peptides. At 5 p.m., Olivia Zhou, a Cambridge Gates scholar will be doing a microbiology talk. And the next day, Yuan Gao will be doing a talk on DNA. Kate Wong will be doing machine learning for drug discovery and pharmacophore. And Andrew Kwong will be doing a presentation on using AI to detect asthma. And yes, these workshops will all be recorded and uploaded to YouTube later. At 4 p.m., yeah. final submissions will be due on DevPost, which Yash will go over later. And from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., there will be judging, although we do offer a few alternate judging options. You can choose to record yeah. your you can choose to record your presentation instead of giving it live if you're unable to make that time for time zone reasons. And at 8.30, we'll have our closing ceremony and awards announcements. Yes, yeah, so just a little on judging. Um, the judging period, the 5.30 to 7.30, that's just like for 
I try to say like no one um, will need to attend it, so don't worry about like, oh, I have to block out 5.30 to 7.30, you know. Um, and also like, yeah, I think that's it for good. So um, we'll release results on the uh, 13th tentatively, if, if we can do everything. So now, um, Drum sure roll. everyone's probably, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure everyone's probably trying to get this to the secret theme. Um, so yeah, the secret theme is environmental sustainability. So that's like the main theme, but um, we're gonna allow, so like we know that right now that um, coronavirus is like a really big issue and we know that people would definitely want the chance to make software. So we decided that we had add a coronavirus theme and a biotech theme. However, um, the prize money only goes to the main uh, theme. So if so, like, um, if you make a project on coronavirus, that's cool. And like, that obviously helps it like biotech, that obviously helps, but like um, the main theme, like prize money only goes to the environmental sustainability. We will There's have, yeah. yeah. If you're new to, I we expect most people to be, and one other rationale for having these sub themes is we expect most people to be doing the environmental sustainability thing, making it pretty competitive. So if you're new to coding, uh, it might be another option for you to try one of our sub things where there's less participants. So you might have a better chance at winning a prize. And also yeah. if you do a coronavirus project or biotech project, you could possibly like enter it in another COVID competition or something like that. So, and there will be $50 prizes for the coronavirus and biotechnology track. So it's a lot, it's a smaller prize, but also a smaller pool of contestants. Yeah, I would definitely recommend doing the environmental sustainability theme though. Like, yeah, so um, John had a question, can you do environmental air awareness? Yes, absolutely. So environmental sustainability is literally anything that's in some way <laughs> helps us sustain or protect our environment. So raising awareness would definitely be a way to do so by educating the public. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, like just some like brief background on environmental sustainability. So, um, there's like different, like the words, like breaking down the words individually, like environmental, that could consist of anything that like relates to the environment. So whether it be agricultural sustainability, which is really heavy in bioinformatics, um, whether it be, you know, like uh, air pollution sustainability or like anything that like, um, you know, like runs in that theme. So the reason we chose this is like, um, the reason we chose the environmental sustainability theme is we noticed that like, so right now, like Corona is a really big problem, right? But if you look at the data for one, you can see that like a lot of it becomes um, environmentally like factored. And second, we chose it because environmental sustainability is a long-term problem. Like it's obviously, it's gonna continue. So we obviously wanna act on it but while also acting on you know the current issues so um yeah so judges um so the judges are so we have what six judges i think so the first one is roger Gupta. he's a founding director of the um hdsi or data science institute at uc san diego um, the second one is uh, Ashwan Singh. He is the principal scientist at a bio, at a big biotech firm known as um, Avivi. Uh, and then we have another judge, who is Dr. Satyam Priyadarshi, and he is the chief data scientist and technology fellow at Halliburton. And then um, we also have Dr. Yin Gao who uh, is the CEO of Singular Genomics. And you, if you want to talk about the other two. Sure, so the other two judges, oh, you just said one of my judges. So uh, okay. the other judge we have is Alice Lin, Alice Lee. She is a research scientist and data analyst at also at Singular Genomics, and she has a lot of experience with cancer research and bioinformatics tools. Cool. Those are our judges. Those are the people that are going to be evaluating you for prizes. So, um, recommended resources of programming. So, um, 
like this is just personal experience and personal friends not like limiting this like you don't have to make something on Ripley. you don't have to make something like on glitch but like these are definitely sources that like we've used in the past and that could definitely help so REPL is an online IDE that serves for most languages and it's really easy to run stuff and you know see your stuff live. GitHub is a way to store code and work on it collaboratively. Um, I definitely uh, recommend getting GitHub Desktop. I may do a walkthrough or like an optional walkthrough of GitHub later. Um, just like a quick thing. Uh, Glitch is what we use for our, most of our websites. So if you see the Helix tutoring program, which Andrew will talk about more, um, if you see the Hack the Helix website, those are all hosted on the software known as Glitch. And it's essentially a way that you can like easily see your websites, and it's really, really helpful. Um, and then YouTube slash online tutorials. Um, if you're if you're like experienced with programming, you know that a lot of programming is just googling stuff. If I'm being honest, um, so definitely online tutorials help a lot, and that's something that like you should definitely. Um, uh, so and then like the last ones like people will probably think it's like not that useful but it actually is so language documentation is actually pretty important because like if you have errors in your code like you don't and you don't know why and you like there's a lot with language documentation so definitely take a look at that especially if you're using c so, so. some of you are asking um if we can do hardware if you can do a hardware like i'm assuming you're going to do some arduino or robot submission yosh um do we accept hardware? So yeah, so the thing with hardware is that um we we're gonna have to we're gonna have to you're gonna have to upload a picture or uh, you're gonna have to upload a video of your hardware working. You're going to have to submit your code and it's also like we'd recommend that you stick with software because it's really hard, especially if you're working with teams across the nation, it's really hard to um, with teammates like across the nation, it's really hard to like collaborate on Arduino, right? Unless, um, like, unless you really want to do it, like, we'll definitely accept it, but just like be mindful of these like things. So, okay, so now how you can get involved with Helix? We have a, so this is the main organization that created that created the hackathon and Yash can go to the next slide. So there's a variety of ways you can be, continue to be involved after participating in the hackathon. For example, we have our chapters program where you can start your own chapter and we'll give you materials and support to, to teach bioinformatics. We also read a science blog with an active science blog with many, with many pieces on various topics of science from chirality to phage therapy to stem cells We've also been heavily involved in fundraisers throughout our community. We ourselves raised $400 to purchase masks and personal protective equipment. We have also 3D printed our own face shields and donated them to hospitals. And we recently helped raise nearly $9,000 with a youth care club, another local San Diego based organization. So shout out to our amazing fundraising committee for helping with that. And we've also, of course, have our research online research program, which is currently focused on COVID. But we are also expanding to do lung cancer and Parkinson's after uh, in, in late May, after these things settle down. Next, we also have a research writing program where our editors and scientific review board will help you transfer your existing science research or science fair project into a paper. And then you can publish it through Helix and get a $10 reward. If you publish through us, uh, then you're now eligible to present at the International Youth Research Summit. So that's an event we're hosting again virtually in June, and that's where we'll have some of the top research, high school researchers from around the world present on their work. So this will be like ICEF finalists, BioGenius winners, and of course, if you uh, submit your research through us or also just like sign up on the website, that would also be an option. Besides that, we also have uh, the COVID Action Fund by Spark Team. So by being a Helix chapter, you have exclusive accelerated access to this action fund, which means you can have up to $100 in funding for a community project that alleviates some issue related that has been caused by the recent pandemic. So only by being a Helix chapter do you have uh, special access to this. 
And the next part is our hackathon startup mentoring. Based on our pre past experience with running hackathons and online events, we are now able to help Helix chapters start their own hackathons, whether in person or online, starting uh, this year. So if you're interested in your Helix chapter member, you can definitely reach out to us and we can help you start up a hackathon. We're also doing an online bioinformatics summer camp in partnership with a few other biology, science related programs. Additionally, we're starting a podcast on science. So if you're interested in working on a podcast or you like podcasts, you should definitely check that out. We are also doing a free tutoring program, free online tutoring, with as well as an online learning resource database. So these are a few of the many things Helix does, and you can also get in both of them too. Yeah. Okay. So, um, slides are so I'm gonna walk you guys through DevPost. So, um, like in the chat, how many of you guys actually have DevPost accounts? I think I sent out an email to organizers. Andrew, can you answer the question in the uh, chat? The, um... Yeah, SG, you can uh, you can do like a hardware with coding if you want, like Arduino okay. or robot. Yeah, cool. So it's good that everyone, a lot of people have a DevPost account. We'll send out more details of the DevPost account just in case you don't have it. Um, but yeah, let me walk you guys through it along the collapses. Okay, so here's our dev post page. It's hackthehelix.devpost.com. Um, if you want to head over there right now. So uh, on our dev post page, we have you know some basic mission statements, we have um, you know, details, uh, so and then like uh, the prizes, including our sponsors on the side, and Eligibility, submission requirements, our judges, which we have to update, and the judging criteria. So, um, right now, so everyone could just register for this hackathon. So, as you can see, me, Will, and Andrew are already registered. Um, if this loads, yeah. So, me, Will, and Andrew are already registered. Uh, so then there's basic rules, it's just dates, and then for submissions, this is like pretty important. So, um, yeah, like we're gonna we're gonna like walk you through submissions and how to submit stuff. But yeah, that's like most of the things. Um, for submissions, uh, there's just this brief form that you need to fill out, and then you need to upload your files. So, um, let me walk back to the submission. So. On the submissions, um, these are what you need to have. So please submit an app, your app with the brief write-up if you're competing with the, on the hackathon and not the pitch fest. However, for pitch fest submissions, please submit an app or a brief write-up um, and your pitch, your pitch presentation slides and a video of your pitch. Yeah, so, can, I, can you just check the dev post visibility settings? What? It seems like people are, in, are in, unable to access the website oh okay uh oh they didn't publish it for me okay whatever I got scanned um yeah so here we go can you guys see it now It should be okay now because I'm in incognito and I was okay. Great, thanks, uh, Grant and Kushmeet. Hello, oh, that's William, I think. Oh, William, yo, this is this is that guy. Um, but yeah, so you guys will be submitting your stuff through um Dev Post, and yeah, uh, it's just like there's a simple form. You'll fill it out. You'll put your code. You'll put your um, other stuff in, and then it'll be all good to go. So if you guys can see this, yeah. Um. So if so, it seems like people are starting to register. Um, and then I I don't think we went over the sparking pitch fest. So the sparking pitch fest. Um. So in Sparking, there's this thing called the Accelerator Challenge, which is the global competition that uh gives like six thousand dollars in prize money that's like what you probably like heard about that somewhere but yeah 
Um, let me just open the. Uh, let me just open the website. Sorry, the computer's being really slow because of the stream, but yeah. Um, right. <clears throat> so I'll just walk through this. Yeah, so um, round one submissions. So this is this uh, how your like video should go. So essentially you introduce your company you this is like this has to be like creative but like remember this is like optional so you don't need to do it if you don't if you don't feel comfortable with videos or anything um so the way your video will be submitted the way your video will be graded is feasibility which is 25 percent essentially um like how much does your how like practical is your thing so like if you're making some company that like solves covid for like like in 10 seconds or something, or like does some crazy thing that like isn't just generally feasible, then like the chances that you get high scores on that aren't very high. So you wanna make sure that it's something that um, you can elaborate on. So if you wanna make a COVID company that like allows, you know, like faster testing or something like that. Uh, innovation, so like if you're making like another Google but calling it like Google or something, like that's not innovative. So it definitely has to be something unique. Um, yeah you have to like understand how like competition works and like um how like a competitive market works and like we obviously have to see that so uh if you can display that that'd be good um do you like have a story behind your you know like company and why you did it and like is there something other than i wanted to win the competition um flammability is like like what would so uh the six thousand dollar grand prize so if you make it past round one um what will happen is uh you'll go to a national a, a global competition in which you'll have a chance to win six thousand dollars of a grand prize and um yeah so that's why this is like like why does that matter it's because like the six thousand dollars it yeah so it's like a six thousand dollar grand prize so um not only do we offer you the four hundred dollar grand prize but we also offer you you know a chance to win six thousand so the reason you should compete in this is like there's just a lot so yeah um all right are there any questions if you guys want to unmute and ask questions i'll open the floor up but just try doing one at a time uh, Okay, you guys should all. Yeah, you guys should all be able to talk. Josh, can you hear me? Yes, it's yeah, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, it's Tyler. Hi guys. So I'm I'm Kai, um, the co-founder of Spark Team, which is hosting this entrepreneurship challenge, and so I can provide a little bit more information here. And so, as as he said, if you qualify, um, if you place in this competition, then you automatically get entered into the semifinalist round. Um, for Sparking Accelerator Challenge, which is the competition with $15,000 in return free investment. So not only competing for the $400 in, um, in this like local smaller competition, but also for the $15,000 in this huge uh, global virtual challenge. And so, and so I think the real incentive behind becoming part of this challenge isn't just the prize money, it's the fact that you get to be entered into the Spark Team Accelerator Challenge. So essentially, uh, you you win the like let's say you get first, second, third, or win the Sustainability Award in the in the Spark Team Accelerator Challenge, right? Then you automatically get entered into a startup accelerator. Essentially, have meeting world class in investors, mentors, entrepreneurs. And this is the place where real value happens, right? Because these are people who make your business happen. You get free patent filing. They do your information for you. All that happens for you and you can have your business, whatever you make in this competition, actually become a real thing. And I think that's way bigger than any monetary prize. And so you get the prestige that comes with winning the prize, but also you get, a, you get the feeling of making your product, whatever you make during this hackathon, a real thing that's impacting possibly thousands or even millions. Uh, 
Oh yeah, so that's our sponsor, Kyler. Um, we'll be sending out uh, pings every two hours to, you know, uh, promote his company and, you know, yeah, you guys should definitely check out his stuff though. Ky Kyler and like his work at Spark Team is really cool. Um, but yeah, no. Um, are there any other questions that we can answer on the stream? If you guys want to unmute, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, there are a couple questions in the chat, I think. There were? Okay. Uh, I already took care of them. Cool. So, yeah, uh, I'll just go through them on the live, though. So, for people who are not checking out the stream. Um, so, yeah, uh, Jerry, yes, you should make a dev post. Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, this is just the website. Um, okay. Uh, hold on. My team and I. Uh, so yeah, you can talk to Andrew more about that, Eric. Um, uh, for so to form a team. Um, for team forming, we're gonna have you guys like we're gonna probably do something that's like. Like if you don't have a team, then um, it's okay. But we'll we'll get you guys paired up. Yeah. Um, can we send .py files? Of course you can. Uh, that's code. So yeah. Um, okay. Um, sorry. Yeah. No. So yeah, one thing is, um, everyone that doesn't have a team needs to like say something in chat because, or, or because um, not everyone that has a team uh, said so. So we don't know exactly who has a team or not. Like I'm, most of the people filled out the form, but we don't want you to pair with someone that already has a team of four or something. So can you just like say something? No, not in this chat, in the uh, in the Discord, and then we can like try to pair you up after that. Mm -hmm. Like if, if a bunch of you just say it, and then we we can just randomly pair you up guys up. Yeah. So yeah. So do people who choose Yeah, okay, not in this chat in the Discord, please. Yeah, everyone please do the in the Discord. Um do people who choose different teams compete separately? Yes. Um Um Yeah. Oh, so on dev post it's actually really cool. So if I if you guys ever have a question or if you ever have like, hey, I have this much experience. Like, maybe who wants to like team with me? Please post it on the discussion forum. Um, you can also change your status to I, I'm looking for a team, which is really cool because then um, everyone who else, everyone else who's looking for a team is displayed with their status and like a gallery of people who like they can team. With. So that also really works. Cool. Um, and then remember, 4 p.m. submission deadline. Um, so you'll just be submitting on dev posts if you need any help, uh, we'll be there. Yeah. And then like throughout the hackathon, like you just, yeah, throughout the hackathon, if you need any help, just please message us in the discord. Um, does one person per team submit the final product? Yes. One person per, uh, one person per team submits the final product. Please do not spam our systems. Uh, yes, environmental sustainability entries are the only one eligible for Spark Team. Well, you can still compete in the Spark Team challenge if you're not doing environmental sustainability, but you're only eligible for the Spark Team like eight hundred dollars in prizes. But you could you could like if you have a different project, you could still enter it in like the Spark Team round one form. But just for this competition, you can only get the prize money, like the four hundred, two hundred, one hundred, if you are doing environmental sustainability because that's one of the terms that Spark Team gave us. Um, there, I, I don't think there's a, like a drawback to, to either of the side themes. Um, Harsh, you can just listen or make your dev post account and then uh, get your team to also uh, register for the hackathon on dev post. Yep. Okay, so gosh, should we move on to the next part? Wait, one moment. Um, yeah. Uh, Harsh, we sent a link. 
Andrew Peck Discord is, but I think there's a little bit of confusion on the the Spark Teen eligibility side of things. So I just wanted to clarify that a little bit. So basically for Spark Teen's accelerator challenge, we have three steps, right? We have the submission where you see your pitch. If you qualify for round two, the semifinal round, uh, this is like the top 30 teams, right? And so if you win this competition, if you place in the top three of this competition, then you automatically get fast tracked to the semifinalist round of Spark Teen therefore making you more likely to win $15,000 um, in the larger competition. And so even if you don't, say, place in top three in uh, this competition specifically, then you're able to go back and submit your video pitch to round one to kind of get a second chance at qualifying um, in the Spark Team competition. Yeah, so our judges, so yeah, thanks for clarifying that, color. But um, yeah, so... Okay, just to answer SG's question, yes, having a team is required because we don't want you working alone and it's really cool to like make the videos. So yeah, um, for uh, the pitch test, um, just to clarify, we will be sending five teams to the to the uh, uh, qualification to the like team competition, and then those five teams, yeah, they'll go. But then you guys can submit your video. Um, to sparking directly, as Kyler said. So, yeah, definitely. I would definitely recommend doing the pitch fest though, because it seems like a cool opportunity. So, yeah. Any other questions about Helix, the hackathon, anything in general? So now we're going to recommend some great coding resources. Yeah, I can pull them up. So yeah, mm -hmm. um, we had a slide on this. So, um, so the first one I'm gonna recommend is uh, yes, Stack Overflow. This is true. Um, but yeah, uh, so GitHub.com. So um, for GitHub, I would definitely you're all random projects, but yeah, um, I would definitely recommend uh, like using like using GitHub Desktop. So I'll open my GitHub Desktop. So GitHub Desktop is super useful because, and if you need help setting it up, I can definitely do something. If you guys want me to like do a tutorial on that or like some like thing on that, then I can definitely do that. Can you guys see my GitHub Desktop? I don't know here, I'll open it. Um, okay, let me share my GitHub Desktop screen, okay. So yeah, here's the GitHub desktop. So essentially, um, this is a project that I'm working on. Uh, so you click like, you can use this to like really easily collaborate with people because um, you can upload your code to this like general branch and then like allow people to look at it. So um, for people who have used this like, I definitely consider uh, like looking into GitHub Desktop and how to use it and like looking at online tutorials. It's really, really cool. Um, this was like our Hack the Helix website, our first one, but this is essentially how we collaborated on it. Um, so if I'm working on some code, I can push it up to the cloud and then someone else can, you know, push their code up to the cloud. And so now we'll have combined codes and combined edits. And it'll obviously tell you, you know, errors if you're like editing the same thing, but yeah. Um, so GitHub is definitely one. Another thing is Glitch. You guys can see my screen. Yeah. So Glitch.com is really cool. So for instance, this is our Happy Helix website. And it's really neat because like, after we program this, we can click show in a new window and here's our website. And then like, if I were to be like, um, and it all, and a, like another cool feature I think about it is like, um, you know, like uh, live edits. So it essentially is like Google Docs and you can see like live edits. So if I was like, if I changed, um, you will to uh you will and then you'll see like 
a change here. If my yeah, so it just changed to live. So it's really easy because then you don't have to like refresh and like go back into the HTML and do stuff like that. So it's just really easy to run in my opinion. Um, okay, so that's and then there's also Replit, which is really cool. This is just like a bunch of random, you know, uh, like you can create a REPL and then it's just a bunch of code and you can run it. So yeah. And then I think that's most of it. And then a lot of it is just online tutorials and finding your own stuff. So Andrew recommended this GitHub student de developer pack. I would too. It has, not only does it have like a bunch of GitHub benefits, but it also has um, a bunch of like, um, general benefits so like whether that be domains free, like free domains like free um you know other stuff but yeah it's definitely cool and it's definitely something i check out andrew do you have anything to add um no okay does anyone have any questions like any theme questions or any like oh hi Conan <laughs> oh all the so yeah thanks for asking that Kalos. um so I had Will create a bunch of random voice channels um the reason being is that so you guys can say like like say a uh, team one or something uh say team one or something was like oh, I want to meet, you know, like at 10 p.m. or something today, right? And then everyone's on the team's like, okay, cool, where do we meet? So if you guys want to meet, you guys can just meet in the private channels. Um, we have limited ones, so we have, there's a max capacity of four. So like, it, if you guys meet in our private channels on our server, then we'll, like, we can obviously help you easier. And there's just like a lot of benefits in doing that. Um, if we're using certain modules in Python, uh, Shree, can you elaborate on that? Like, like imports and stuff. Like, it should be fine because the compiler there is the same. So, no, it should be fine. Oh, just send it regular, regularly. Sorry. Um, where's the challenge and all the info posted? The challenge. Uh, we will update the website today. Um, I'm gonna send out a recording of this lecture along with the video, along with the slides, so yeah. And then, um, do we need to add teammates right now? John, what do you mean? Uh, no, everyone is not going to see everyone else's presentation. The only ones that we will put up are the um, winners and the special award winners and yeah, and then some is working ones. Uh, like in dev. Uh, oh, Shree, um, Shree. Yeah. Uh, you can also send a vi if it if it's like a thing where it's really hard to run the code, like send the judges the code. You can just like uh, do a screen video, screen recording video of that. But in most cases, I'd recommend that if you if you're able to make the code available to the judges and let them like work on a, like play with the app or website, that would be like the best thing to do because. Uh, then they actually get to like interact with your thing. Yes. Uh, Hugh Hong, yes. Uh, Rod, Rodwan, yeah. So we also, there's also going to be a few people who are submitting early by video. And we have like uh, a lot of judges. It's also likely that it'll like run over time, which is why we left like in a one hour gap between judging end time and what's it called? Oh, judging end time and the ceremony or oh, ending ceremony. And we are also limiting teams to a strict uh, five minute presentation time limit. Yeah, so make sure that so your video is going to be five minutes so we we have three hours to judge your thing so we'll be looking at each entry and then we have seven judges so yeah but um we'll potentially leave some judging criteria later in the week if you guys want me to do like some uh github like lecture or something i can definitely do that so just tell me if you guys don't understand github because github's really useful
Um, so don't worry about the sorry, don't worry about the judging logistics right now. So like a monoff, um is it one judge per video? So no, you'll be like multiple judges will be viewing your video. So yeah. Also, we'll most likely be uh, adjusting the judging time, as uh, some of you are concerned about, because it was like a recent decision to allow everyone to compete rather than having a people limit. So we might have actually three hours or four hours for judging. Because yeah, of the will, yeah, we'll handle it. Don't so, worry. Yeah. And so for judging, like, I'm going to say this again. Please don't block out 530 to 730 or like any time there's because like we don't need you for judging. The only people that will need for judging are like me, Andrew, Will, and um, the judges. So please don't feel obligated to cancel everything in that time period. Um, yeah, like you won't have to be there. Okay. Is the production quality, so do we have to, so how long is the video? Five minutes. Um, you don't have to include the video presentation in your submission, but the video presentation is the way that you're going to get into uh, the Sparking Accelerator Challenge. Uh, production quality doesn't matter that much because we understand that like teams may work on, you know, different levels. I mean, it has to be like understandable. But like, other than that, there's no like, oh, you have to make it like crazy good. You know, we, we understand that it's hard to do it like across nations and stuff. So yeah. Okay. Um, what do you mean by that? Uh, so, so I see. No, you don't need a video if you're doing approach best. Okay, um, if there's no other questions, we can end a bit early. Uh, yeah, for now, only one person has to submit. Um, yeah, so along with your product, yeah, if you want to do the pitch fest, then you will submit a video along with your product. Does cancer and other animals count? Uh, Andrew can probably answer that question better than I can. If he's still here. No, cancer in animals does not count as environmental sustainability. It may count in biotech or like, if since it's like medicinal related. But definitely not environmental sustainability. Okay. Um, how will judging be for international students? Uh, like, what do you mean by that? I think we'll we'll just be judging the same. Like, hopefully everyone is meeting virtually, so the bridge between international students shouldn't change. Any other questions? There's 95 people on the stream. So, any other questions? One. Um. So time zone difference. Yeah, that's definitely something you have to consider. Um, it's going to be 4 p.m. TST, but we understand it's like 4 a.m. in some people's times. Um, if you could just submit your thing like a little earlier, and maybe have maybe send it to some of your teammates who can like continue to work on it and like you know can do that then that'd be cool um you could have your uh so i would say yes most it's probably good for all of you guys to be in the presentation video reason being uh and like it's not hard to come across because like you can film one part and then your other partner in another country can film or different times I can uh, film another part. Um, so yeah, there's definitely ways to come around it. And like, you guys can just do different scenes, like cut out, we understand like cutouts because like, you know, we understand that there's different, you know, people across the nation. Uh, what theme should we choose? That's completely up to your choice. Um, there's a main theme, which is environmental sustainability. Um, 
Uh, you, I recommend you make a presentation video. That'd be the best for us too and you guys, because we have to have because that just speeds up judging. So yeah, definitely presentation video. Um. So it's not a, it's not a live presentation. It's a, wait. Uh, so it's not a live presentation. It's a, um, so it's not a live presentation. It's a video presentation that you submit. So SG on your question, can we submit and present early for international? So you don't have to present like live. You can just record your thing and then send it over and we'll look at it. Like, what What do you mean like research paper? Like, so who will do the presentation? It's in your teams, you'll do the presentation. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, so you send the video and the software, that's it. Wait, what do you mean research paper? Are, are, are you, are you, are you Lamnia, are you Lamnia's brother or relative? It will not be in a research paper because this is like a, a coding project. Wait. How will how will so the presentation um the presentation will be sorry so the presentation will be a presentation video that you submit to us using dev post. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? Or seems there's 84 people in the stream. Any other questions? Okay. Andrew, do you just want to call it? Um. Uh, what is it? What was the due date for submissions again? Oh, the submissions are due on the 12th at 4 p.m. Um, are you posting? Uh, like, oh no, we're not posting the recordings unless you win or something, and unless we get your consent. So no, we're no, it's completely private unless we get your consent to post them. Uh, Shranchi, what's your question? It's not mandatory, correct. So we'll definitely, like these workshops and seminars are, will be recorded too, and they're like kind of cool. And like, I definitely check them out, but like if you're busy or if you can't attend, that's completely understandable and it's not required. Sherry, what's your question? And then we do. No, no, no. So, the video presentation is for the pitch fest um i'll send out the link for like more information on it and like how it should be structured and stuff but essentially it's as if your product became a company and like the implications of your product becoming company where can we find the schedule um on our website at hackthehelix.org so yeah yeah no problem yeah, you can find the schedule at hypothelos.org and we're going to send out the slides, which also has the schedule. So definitely places and you can always ask us. So yeah. Uh, is everyone in the Discord? Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Yeah, okay. Okay, are there any other questions?
for me to answer or anything, so. Unmuted, muted, unmuted. I'm now going to stop the recording. Yeah.